Did you know that the dragon Parthenax in Skyrim is voiced by the same man who voices Nintendo's Mario? You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the XboxHub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello, and welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode 133. My name is Gareth Brady. I'm going to be your host and on my virtual left is Mr. James Burks. How you doing, James? Hello there. I'm all right, thank you. And can I say what a great gaming fact that was that you just told us <laughs> at the start of the podcast? <laughs> you don't know what that fact is. He hasn't heard a fact. Yeah, thank you very of much. Yeah, you. <laughs> oh, dear me. Right, yes, thank you. And on my virtual right is Mr. Richard Dobson. How you doing, Richard? Hello. Good to be here. How are you guys? Very good. Um, and I'm a virtual opposite, Mr. Darren Edwards. How are you doing, Darren? Hello, it's great to be back for the third week in a row. I'm, I'm loving it. Oh. I actually got Wednesday evenings free for the first time in ages, which is great. Good. Brilliant. Um, I'm just going to de- 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 declare something before we start. Um, I'm looking after a little dog. Well, not just a big dog, buddy. And um, well, my dog. And he's a bit of a barker, so he might bark through this podcast. It's not all I can do. He barks at everything. Um, so if he barks, we just pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> and also, I've got people because it's summer holidays upstairs in the flat. Above, I've got grandchildren, with, but not my grandkids. Someone else going, they're screaming as well. So it could be chaotic today. Oh. But we like it. We like it. We've got lots to talk about. Um, how was your week, you chaps? First of all, James, what was your week been? What have you been doing? Um, well, I've been trying to catch up with everything at San Diego Comic Con this weekend. Um, so a lot of news coming out of there. Lots of trailers. Um, not a lot from DC though, which is quite su- well, not really that surprising. They've only really got the flash. And they can't do much of that, can they? No, that's, um, that's gone. But a nice trailer for Black Adam. That looks good again. Uh, the Rock doing his thing as usual. Um, what else do I think it was quite good? Oh, the Marvel stuff. Have you guys seen the Marvel trailers? Yeah. Iron Blue yeah. And Hulk. What did you think? There's a lot. There's a, something for everyone, I think. It's hard not to get excited. I know last week we were talking about Marvel fatigue, but I am quite excited again after seeing the slew of trailers and announcements. Mm. I, it's mm. hard, isn't it? It's really hard with this thing. I think it's like, it, it's going to get to a point that it does get saturated and people go, oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> That's the next four years plan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't know who that one is. I know that one. Yeah, it's it's like someone it's like someone at work going, This is my five year plan. Um, we're gonna be uh, accounts department's gonna be pretty good in two years' time. It, it, do, do you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you think you quite a lot of films come out next year, don't they? Like big films. Yeah. Is it Ant Man and Lost, Guardians, um The Marvels? Played that's quite a lot, yeah. In one, in one kind of year, it will get very tiresome. I, I think, think, sorry, I think, Richard, sorry, I, I think we were at that point that you just mentioned, Gareth. I think with this phase four stuff, I know we had um Spider Man and Doctor Strange that sort of teased us with this idea of the multiverse, but everything else felt a bit generic. Um, and well, I certainly got to the point where I was like, you know. Mm. where's it going but with this plan now you can you know again where it's building up to mm. and seeing those two avengers films in 2025 mm-hmm. i think you're like yeah this is it's gonna it's gonna start ramping up again and i and i think we can just enjoy it again for what it is now yeah yeah and i think i i mean i've, I've really enjoyed the tv series i'll be honest you, i really enjoyed those i've i've almost preferred them a little bit to the films recently I felt they've had more interest to them and I like Loki. I really enjoyed that. And I think the guy yeah, who's yeah. playing Khan, Khan, Khan he, um, Jonathan, I forgot his second name. Mages. He, yeah, Mages. He's brilliant. He's a brilliant, brilliant actor. He's just mm. magnetic. And that whole speech he did in the end of that was just like, wow. So to see his journey carry on through is really exciting. So, yeah, it's, yeah, no, absolutely. I think it, you know, I've always enjoyed them. 
I really do. I always enjoy them. I never, not, I don't really never enjoy them. I, Doctor Strange was fine. I mean, I enjoyed it. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't... Trying to convince us of yourself, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like quite familiar now, isn't it? Yeah. It sounds familiar now. Yeah, it does feel a bit familiar. Is it the only one in this phase that stood out for me? Or is Shang Chi? Mm. That was good. That was fine. Everything yeah. right, it just yeah. felt different. Yeah. He's just so, been confirmed as the right. director for the new Kang Dynasty Avengers film, hasn't he? Uh, yes. That's a good sign, isn't it? That's yeah. quite promising. Because he was very good. Yeah. yeah. I think also yeah. sometimes as well, I think they need to do something really surprising. I think that's a great thing with, you know, with Endgame. Spoilers for Endgame, if you haven't seen it. Um, is, you know, you had. You had death, you had consequence in that, didn't you? And you, the the five year, those two Avenger movies that had that five year, the click was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and you know, yeah. on, a, on a storytelling event, that's just like the most amazing thing to go. Actually, the, half the planet's gone. And now they're sort of dealing with it. But I, I don't feel like they have dealt with it. <laughs> I don't know. It's a bit <laughs> like we're just carrying on now. On oh, the multiverse is happening now. It's interesting you say that because. There was a bit of confusion in the new Thor film. There's like a in New Asgard where Thor is. There's a shop that's called like Infinity Cones with a big ice cream and a big gauntlet. And people are saying, "Has everyone just kind of got over the trauma now?" And they're happy to make light of what happened. <laughs> yeah. It seems a bit blasé, <laughs> yeah. which was a fair point. Yeah. I thought. No, absolutely. I mean, it's great in that. I'm going to do another spoiler now, so don't if you haven't seen it. I really enjoyed the Hawkeye um, series. I really enjoyed that. Not a lot of people. I, did. Did. I thought it was great. I thought she was great. He was great. It was a real, felt like a buddy, buddy action movie. But I, I really like the implications then of the five years. They dealt with it a bit there when, mm. when people sort of going, you know, I've come back. And I think one of the films, one of the characters comes back and go, my cat died. I loved my cats. They all died. Mm. Got, things like that. And it's just like, I don't know. I think the TV, it'd be interesting. I think, it's, I think we're going to see Daredevil as well, which is good. See a new I series. Can't wait there. for that. Yeah, but what's the wait for that? Will it be a sweary? <laughs> oh, I don't know whether it's going to be gory. justified or not. Yeah, because that was part of it. Well. Sure. well, it's Disney. Yeah, you want that from Blade as well, a little yeah. bit. Oh, absolutely. Mm. We're well, talking of Hawkeye. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Kingpin was dumbed down a bit in that, wasn't he? So yeah, yeah. he wasn't quite as brutal as I remember him in Daredevil, didn't he? slam somebody's head in a car door or something That's there was right, none yeah. of that in the Disney Plus series no. so they may dumb it down a bit well we've uh, covered quite we've covered a lot of time here at Marvel it's good right? That's right. <laughs> um, that, was, that was that James's week James that was your week wasn't yeah. it that's good good thank you Darren what about you what have you been doing I haven't really got much to add apart from working and um, following Comic Con yeah I think we've about covered my week as well to oh, be fair God. what about you Richard you covered your week as well I just wanted to mention the uh, the semi final yesterday, oh, the, the women's Euro, wasn't it? It was so good, uh, yeah. yeah, and very much looking forward to Sunday now. Laura said to me at one point, she just turned to me and she said, "It's much better than watching the men." And I thought about it, and I was like, "It is actually much more <laughs> exciting." Yeah, like I know that the men have have done very well as well, but Gareth Southgate is much more defensively minded and eking out a 1-0, 2-0 victory is, mm. is a good result for the men. But the, the attacking power that the, 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 the England, the Lionesses have, is just so exciting to watch. And uh, I think it was nine points something million tuned in last yeah, night. Amazing, so, that's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's going, it's all positive for the, for the Lionesses at the moment, and I'm yeah. happy for them. Bernadette watched it, well, she didn't really watch it, she was on her phone. But she watched it. She not really a football fan, but she was watching the second half and the, and she saw the third goal. And if you haven't seen it, third goal was um, it was a back heel. And she and she went, mm. "Does that normally happen?" I went, "No, no." <laughs> <laughs> she said, she was "Like it was always the time people just back heeling things in or doing stuff like that." No, never, never happens. Uh, yeah, good. Um, and so, Richard, that's me. Uh, that's me. Yeah, I'm not going to talk anymore. We we we, we use this time. I was going to talk about Westworld, but I haven't really got much to say, so I'm watching it again. Okay. You're liking it? <laughs> Do you know, I, <laughs> I'm not quite convinced you then from last week. I think, I think the problem is, it's, I think everyone's a, everyone, it, it feels like they're a bit too po-faced sometimes now, and it's a bit too like serious, everyone's going, 
everyone talks like this. His voice <laughs> is like this all the time. And everything's really, really... And some of, it, some of it's a little bit cheesy now. The writing's not as good as it was. When you, the first two series, it was like really brilliant, really written kind of interesting monologues and, and ideas about, you know, gaming really, about being on loops and do these people have minds. Now it's like a sort of sci-fi action movie with a few twists. It just hasn't got that, hasn't got that bite to it. But I'm still watching it. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. That's brilliant. what else is. Yeah, I know. It's finishing, <laughs> isn't it? This is it. Um, good. What games have we been playing? We're going to do one each. We've got some good news and we've got a quiz. Um, should we have one each? Let's go for Richard first. Oh, uh, I'm going to talk about Into the Breach, mm-hmm. which is an older game. I think it came out in about 2018. But it's a, a sort of turn-based strategy RPG um, set. Some it must be some time in the future where there's uh, these bugs, these alien bugs that have come to Earth, and you're tasked with destroying them. Um, but the beauty of Into the Breach is the 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 maps are all eight by eight grids, um, so the action is constant. It's not like other tactical games where you need to spend two or three turns getting into position before you can make an attack it's almost like you're already in a position to make an attack um and there's a really interesting sort of time time travel mechanic to it so once per mission if you don't think things are going the way that they should be you can reset the timeline Mm. um and and then one of one of your team will make a a comment as like has something just happened here and you feel like it's sort of building a bigger narrative every time that you you rebuild this timeline. Um, the bugs will attack you, but then there's also settlements to defend. And if so many settlements get destroyed across your entire playthrough, um, basically humanity loses, and you sort of have to restart the game from the beginning. Um, so I'm not lost yet in there's four islands to sort of reclaim um and i've managed to claim a couple i'm not lost a full playthrough yet but i'm interested to see how that's woven into the narrative because um well I, I i started playing it because there was um a big a big update came out for it last week and i'd heard really good things about it when it launched on the switch but also I didn't realise, but Netflix bought the rights to the mobile version. So if you've got a Netflix subscription, you can play it on uh, iOS and Android as part of that. And it works as a, it's, they've converted it into touchscreen now as well. So I've been playing it on both. And uh, touchscreen works really well for it. Great. Good. So you're playing it on the Switch, are you on the... I'm, on, I'm playing it on both. both um, right. Just to, yeah. But uh, I know that we're, we're sort of against mobile, mobile titles, but, yeah, it's, it's very good. Um, <laughs> Who's, whose stance is that? Is that all of us? We also, we're against them. I know, I know that James has mentioned them before, and we've all gone, ooh, shouldn't we play a mobile game? <laughs> <laughs> oh, James. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, especially if it's part of Netflix, then, then exactly. yeah, give yeah. it a try. Great. Good, I didn't. I forgot about all that stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah, good. Into the breach. Thank you, Richard. Um, James, what have you got? Something classy? I've got a game. Oh. Um, it's a murder mystery point and click adventure called Lord Winklebottom Investigates. Um, and it's set like in a 1920s alternate universe, and it follows Lord Winklebottom. Is a giraffe, and Dr. Frumple is a hippopotamus, um, and they work together <laughs> in, a, in a detective agency. Um, are you with me so far? Yeah. I love it so far. Already sold. Yeah. Oh, good game. <laughs> good game. Um, <laughs> so, basically, these detectives get invited to an island for gathering have an old friend called Admiral Guilfrey, who's a fish. Um, but when they get there, it turns out he's dead. You know, is, is he been murdered? Well, then we have to find out it's the investigate. 
Good. Unfortunately, all the suspects are trapped on the island for the bad weather. So you can investigate and interrogate them all at your free, uh, well, as much as you want, really. And, and James, um, James, is it is something fishy going on? We yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh dear. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 oh dear, that's bad. <laughs> oh my um, word. But yeah, it's a pretty quick. There's yeah. a lot of cooking, mm. a lot of fighting. Um, the puzzles are quite logical, but the best part of it is the characters are the characterization of the animals. It's got really good British voiceovers. And they're all really quite funny. Um, I mean, there's a, a pelican that steals things, which is an old theatre actress. <laughs> um, and there's a, a chameleon who tends to go unnoticed by everyone, which got a Lancashire accent, so I felt quite at home with her. <laughs> She's very interesting. <laughs> um, and everything you interact with in the environment it's always something either funny or interesting to say about it. So it's, it's a really well written and humorous adventure. Um, the only drawback is that some things that you need to pick up can't be picked up at just certain points in the plot. So you might think you've interacted with it and thought, oh, well, that's no good then. And then later on, you can actually pick it up. Um, oh. So it can be a bit confusing. But otherwise, it's very funny, well written, quite a clever mystery as well. As in, you won't know who's done it until right in the very end. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend it. And what did you give it? Is it, is it a four and a half? Oh, fancy. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it made me laugh quite a lot. Good. Very Great. Funny. Lovely. Um, Darren, what's Any your question? Oh, sorry. No, okay. All right, no worries. It's fine. <laughs> You were very in-depth. You told us everything we need to know. Oh, good. Thank you. Good. I think that was a compliment. Good. Um, <laughs> Darren, what's your game? Um, so a game I've been playing is called The Galactic Junkers, which I seem to have fallen into these type of games recently. So it's another um, spaceship kind of sim hybrid action adventure game. So you play as a captain, and you get to choose, you get to customise, as you do in most games these days, what they look like, what they were, all sorts of details about them. And you, um, there's been a, a, a cataclysmic event that's supposedly destroyed the Earth. Um, and then this world is kind of an alternative reality of our solar system where it's full of kind of space pirates and the galactic uh, union, which kind of are the, the ruling force. And you end up getting, um, well, I won't say what I was going to say because I might spoil it, but you, you're you an enemy number one, essentially, and you're on the run and everyone's after you. So you have to go around trying to solve the mystery of, of, of why everyone's out to get you. Um, so you can do various things, such as uh, mine asteroids for um, materials, and you can find ancient Earth artefacts like old phones and batteries and random bits and bobs. Um, you can also, um, when you're kind of going around your main objective, um, you can interact and trade. So you can sell off the items you find. You can buy weapons, clothes, upgrade your ship, buy new ships. There's that type of element to it as well. Um, it's it's quite glitchy. <laughs> so there's some strange things started happening when I was playing it. Um, for example, there's certain passages of play where you go onto a space base and you've got to kind of sneak around and they've all all the all the enemies have got cones of vision like Metal Gear Solid and if you stay in that cone for too long they'll raise the alarm and then it's basically game over. There's no way of getting getting out of that situation. Um so I was kind of I had a crew of three because you can recruit them as you go and one of them got stuck in a door and couldn't get off the ship to the point where I had to close the game and then restart it. And then another time it looked like he was ascending into heaven because he just lifted off the floor <laughs> and like got stuck. It's kind of glitching in mid air. Um, and the speech bubbles started kind of strobing. The game crashed a few Jesus. times. So yeah, it's it's a bit of a mess. 
Yeah, it's clearly yeah. built for PC, and the controls don't translate too well over to Xbox because you control a curse with a thumbstick, but trying to click the right thing when there's loads going on is a bit of a nightmare. So instead of kind of engaging in a in a laser battle with somebody, they end up kind of just running straight into the fray and getting killed and stuff. It's I I enjoyed it in parts, um, but it was just too inconsistent, and there's a lot of glitches to to work out. So yeah, I gave it two and a half out of five, but only because I managed to play long enough without glitches breaking the game. Because there was right. a point where it was unplayable until right. about three or four attempts later, I managed to to play a good couple of hours without any glitches or interruptions. So yeah, yeah. that's the Galactic Junkers. Good. Um... Thank you, Darren. Any questions from you two? No. 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 no okay. Good. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> We're very clear this one. We're very clear. Um, the, the game I'm going to talk about is, I think I've just put it on the site, um, Hazel Sky is a game. Now, Hazel Sky is this kind of really kind of new original sort of concept. It's, it's, it's made by Brazilian developers. I think only eight, but it doesn't look like an eight-person team at all. It looks like a sort of like a double-A game, really. Um, and the idea is you play this in this kind of world, cities are in the sky, almost like Bioshock Infinite, that kind of thing. So cities are in the sky and they're sort of being propelled after this kind of fictional war. And the top thing to be is an engineer. And you play this guy who's sort of training to be an engineer. It's running his family and he's doing the trials. And in these trials, basically he has to go to three islands and there's three um, different ships there, a plane, a, a hot air balloon, and a sort of glider. And you have to go there, find the blueprints, and it'll tell you what you need to do, like um, get the engine or fix with metal, find some metal to fix the, the panel in, and get off the island. That's it. But, of course, it's much more complicated than that. So if you're trying to fix an engine, you have to... Um, get a train that's on a track to go and lift it. Um, sometimes that's blocked. There's bison in the way. You have to find a way of getting the bison out of the track. So it goes on. That as it goes on, it gets more and more complex. So it's like an action adventure game. But there's platforming in there. It has a lovely visual look. Um, I really, really loved it. I thought it reminded me of something a little bit like Uncharted at times, slightly. Um, it had a very original kind of story, beautiful music as well. The thing about it, it's really ambitious. Um, I think it's probably too ambitious at times. And some of the gameplay dynamics is a bit when you're sort of having to sort of rope swing a bit and that's a bit ropey. Ropey, I didn't mean to do that. I really didn't mean to do that. It's very ropey rope work. And uh, and it's, yeah, it's it feels like there's a story there that they've got as well that, doesn't fit into the game. It feels like the story is much bigger and they've got an idea of how to do many sequels, but it doesn't feel like the game you're playing, that story doesn't feel that complete. Would that make sense? It doesn't feel like it's contained. Mm-hmm. It's like watching an episode of a TV series that you went for more. But, you know, we're big fans of, you know, indie developers being ambitious and adventurous mm-hmm. and when things work. So I really liked it. I gave it a four. Because it, there's lots of stuff I really loved. I was intrigued by. Yeah, there you go. Hazel Sky, give it a go. Um, right, gentlemen, we're going to move on. Have you got any questions about Hazel Sky before I move on? Nope. Nope. It's another good job. What was the most interesting puzzle? You oh, there was loads. There was one about. I'd say the one about getting the bison off the track was really interesting. It's basically then I had to f- find a way of getting them by making food, but then I had to get a windmill working again to make. Food, it was like that. Yeah, it was a really good, really interesting. Um, cool, yeah, it's good. <laughs> um, we're going to have some news. Some news just came up today with um, some GTA 6 news. There was a, a, a Bloomberg yeah. um, who did a, a sort of report um, about Rockstar. And during this report, and the report was about how Rockstar have been really changed the way they operate. Um, in the last since about 2018, um, the had quite a sort of macho, um, a terrible kind of work environment, sort of a, a bit laddy again, homophobic at times. There's reports of like the crunch times, really people push them to limits. So I think there's been a complete overhaul 
in the the way Rockstar is. I think Dan Housel left as well. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but um, he's gone. So now at the moment they're they're not doing crunch times. They they were really seeing announced this week. They're not going to do uh, versions of Red Dead again remasters. They cancelled those versions so they can just all concentrate on GTA Six. But there's been a few little bits from this report that the the game will have a female character the first time. Who will be a Latin a Latina, um, part of bank robbers, and is I think it's the first female pr- protagonist. So I've, I've never I thought has it? God, yeah, that's really true. Um, and the idea that maybe it will be in a fictionalized Miami and surrounding areas, which I think we've heard those rumors before, um, but it will be updated with new missions and cities on a regular basis. So, and it has more interiors than any other GTA game or combined. Um, and the only other rumour is that maybe it's going to come out between April 2023 and 2024, March 2024. Um, what do we think? Did you have a little read of this? Were you interested in this? I mean, does this feel credible? Does this feel... Um, James? I know you don't care about GTA, James. I mean, you summed me up perfectly there. Yeah. I don't really care, but... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad that you sorted out, you know, the issues mm. at Rockstar. Um, I mean, Crunch has been horrible for most developers, hasn't it? And it never works out well when they do Crunch. And the environment seemed to be less than ideal. Um, but whether it's a female character or a male character, as long as it's interesting, I'll have a look and see what's what the story's like. Um, I do like the idea that it's going to start big and then it's going to get even bigger all the time. Mm. I like that, because that mm. adds a lot of longevity mm. to, the, uh, to the main game. But, you know, I, I don't mind. I'll give it a go. I won't give it a go. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> on the fence. Yeah. Um, Darren, what do you think? Are you interested um, in this? I can't remember I, if you're interested in GTA. I don't think you are, are you? I, I, I am, but I haven't really played the newer ones. So the most the most exciting part of this story is when I saw the words Vice City <laughs> uh, because I've been, I've been kind of wanting a remake of that for years rather than focusing on GTA 4 and stuff because they've, they've set it in Liberty City like so many times. Like For me, Vice City is my favourite GTA game of all time. But I'm intrigued about the multiple locations because most GTA games, if not all of them, are pretty much set in one city of different districts. Or are they going to go completely different? How would that work? Would the locations evolve in, at the same rate, as depending when you travel into and from? Um, so I think there's some really interesting um, things that they can play around with, but not lose what makes GTA so enjoyable for so many people at the same time. But in terms of the... Um, first female playable character i was surprised at that as well but i mm. thought yeah it's true apart from mm. gt online they say we can you have to customize and choose um it is so that can only be a good thing um so it's a long way off and rockstar on normally um kind of apart from recently are kind of when it's ready it's ready um so we'll yeah we'll wait and see but if it does involve i see in some way that's the bit that will will excite me the most i think Richard, do you think we'll see a trailer this year? Well, if they're if they're planning to release it between April twenty three and March twenty four, I would expect to see something. Probably being saved for the Game Awards. Oh yeah, um, true. But yeah, I I think the uh, the rumours about it being Miami and Vice City can only be a good thing because like Darren said it's been mainly Liberty City and the last one was Los Santos which had been done in San Andreas as well so it's almost like it's the turn of Vice City to make a reappearance um female playable character long overdue I'd be interested to see what they do in terms of GTA 5 or GTA Online then and if there's a way that they can sort of integrate that into whatever GTA 6 brings to an online mm. yeah. thing. Because yeah, um, obviously GTA 5 was meant to have story DLC at one point and then it just everything focused on GTA Online because mm. that was the cash cow. Yeah. Um, and still is. And I don't think, 
Yeah, yeah, still is. They won't want to lose that. They won't want to uh, split the player base with whatever GTA 6 has. Yeah. Um, so it will be interesting to see what they do. Maybe that's in terms of playable cities, as in more than one, maybe that's what they'll try and do. Mm. I mean, they always do something unique. That's the thing about Rockstar. They always come in with something that, you know, that you haven't, that you, that's a surprise. That's something, you know, even with Red Dead 2 recently. You go, I mean, it's it's interesting with the whole sort of like, well, I think Red Dead 2 was a much more um, grown-up story. And I was, I think I've said before in this podcast, I can't imagine them going back to a GTA, you know, <laughs> madness of GTA. It'd be interesting if this has a much more kind of like a realistic tone rather than the Trevor. <laughs> well, 4 felt like that, didn't it, a little bit? Yeah, 4 was yeah, a much more did, mature yeah. story. But you... Then- you were still going on dates and people, you know. <laughs> and going bowling. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, I think it's, it'll always be interesting. But it does, feel, it does feel a bit more kind of, it's starting to, things are starting to come. It's just what normally happens. You get something like this and it starts to, more and more info starts to come out and then there's a trailer. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Good. GTA, let's talk um, about, let's talk about the, really briefly about the Halo Influence co-op campaign so i was a bit confused about this first of all so it, it is the idea you can only play with friends online but you can't do matchmaking with a stranger yes, yes. right that's correct who's a big halo as darren's a big halo person you upset about this darren or are you fine with this um i'm not i'm not i'm not upset i think if if it if they get it right and this is the approach i'm all right with that that's fine as we've seen We've got countless examples of, you know, developers trying to rush to meet meet the pressure from fans, and it's it's gone a bit, you know, skew with. So, I'm I'm fine with it. Um, it you know, it's obviously we we would like it to be fully integrated with online matchmaking from launch, but if they get it right and this is the way to do it, then then so be it. I, I mean, I'll be honest, I I enjoyed Halo Infinite. Um, it wasn't without its issues for me, but mm. I haven't booted up the game in months and months so I'm looking for something to give me a reason to do so again so this this will will be it um, and hopefully I can you know coax some of you guys as well to, to get on board and have a look at I think Richard will, will play for sure yeah Richard you're excited yeah yeah, I, yeah but I can't think of a, another Halo game that had online matchmaking either unless it was introduced as part of the Master Chief collection. I don't don't I think, think right. any, yeah. any of them had it mm. in in their original games either. So I mean, it's not a, not an issue for me. I don't think I'm thinking about it now. I don't think it is probably an issue because if you're doing it and you're on your own, you think, "Oh, I've got no one to team up with." Friend wise, you'd play it solo anyway, wouldn't you? Because it's different to multiplayer co-op, isn't it? I guess. In terms of matchmaking, yeah, you probably yeah. have people in mind anyway. To, yeah, to experience exactly. It Rather than a you. random, who, you know, the, the, yeah, <laughs> they'll just run through the level anyway, and you won't be able to <laughs> see. Be able to control them or yeah. team up with them or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. See also every other online multiplayer game. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, <laughs> we're not worried about it. We're not worried about it. Um, two delays this week. Um, Gollum is the first delay, and Gollum. Lord of the Rings Gollum was coming out on September the 1st and it's been delayed for a couple of months. So it's still going to come out in 2022, but maybe a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I forgot this was going to be a thing. Um, and I like Lord of the Rings, but I completely forgot this was coming, so I'm not that bothered myself. <laughs> this game got some very bad previews um, mm. when it when it was thing. So maybe they're going to work on that and make it better. But I just think if you're going to release it this year in November... I think you're up against some big things in that October, November period. Even it's 2023 worse because lots has been oh, pushed yeah, into yeah. the next yeah, year yeah. as well. There's no good time to release it now. <laughs> September the 1st <laughs> might have been it. Yeah, September. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my oh, word. Yeah. yeah. I know. Oh, 
But maybe, you know, maybe it's going to have the TV series is going to be out on Amazon. You know, maybe people will be looking for it. Maybe it's Lord of the Rings. It's a big old franchise thing. Well, that's had mixed reactions. As everything seems to these days. Yeah, I, I, I can't it. remember the last thing everyone went, that looks great. We can't wait for it. Everything seems to split opinion these yeah, days. But it. you're right. Maybe that will be the kind of warm up for it. Who knows? But it's a stealth game, isn't it? All the way through, really. So that's what you're doing. That's what you're just. That's what I've heard and read. Mm-hmm. I have to, I'm not. Yeah, I think I might have played it on September the first. <laughs> Maybe I won't in November. <laughs> um, good, James. You want anything to say about that? You're not excited about that, are you? Uh, not really. No. 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 <laughs> Fair enough. Um, the other big delay, though, which is a more interesting one, was the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake that the PlayStation announced that they were going to have. Excuse me. That's been delayed indefinitely. Um, and apparently from the thing we read I think they showed some of it to some of the bosses and they went this is a good I'm para- <laughs> paraphrasing here and then that's why there was a delay there so um, that was a big that was a big PlayStation exclusive wasn't it mm-hmm. um, I mean I'm not worried about this I played those games in 2002 I'm not gonna, I'm not worried about it being playing them again what do you it's in, yeah. it's interesting isn't it sorry to jump in i think because yeah. they, re, they re-released the original didn't they even on switch as well i think i think yeah. that's out now you'll probably know richard but um it it is a big game it's a fan favorite so i think i'm i'm a bit like you i'm i'm not really that upset but i think a lot of people potentially will be because i think it a lot of people are excited when it was announced so i i do hope for those people that it's not completely kind of dead in the water but it might be that they've got to go back to the drawing board with it if after what you said gareth if it is really that bad and people have i think people have left the studio and stuff haven't they it's it's really interesting as well i think happened with rockstar didn't it with um they had red dead redemption remaster and gta 4 remastered obviously they were in de- in development um and then they went no let's give it a that yeah let's play on gta 6 and uh, part of my thing is yeah do that with everything Forget the remasters. Get them all doing this other stuff. Stop it. Fallout 76 DLC. No, get them on Starfield. Maybe we're going to come out. You know, it's like, oh. Yeah, so I'm a, you know, I'm not a big fan of remasters. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't sound like it's coming out anytime soon. Um. And the last little story here, this is especially for James, Gotham Knights gameplay trailer <laughs> showed off Batgirl. And this is at the uh, San Diego thing. James, what are your thoughts? You're a big um, Gotham Knights fan. I, I watched it. Yeah. And I'm still not buying it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, it didn't show me anything, though. It wasn't actual gameplay as such. I think it showed me some real gameplay like they did on the rooftops yeah. in the last one. I think I might have been a bit more inclined to try and enjoy it, but it's just a character trailer. Yeah. Who, who used to see that girl is? Who doesn't need to see if you're not interested? <laughs> no. You know what I mean? If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. Why not do it to what you want? <laughs> wow. Uh, right. But Darren, you're more enthusiastic about this, aren't you? Oh, are you coming to me for some positivity? Uh, I kind of agree with James, really. It's a bit of an odd trailer. <laughs> because it, it reminded me of Smash Brothers when they, like, release a character. Like, it's not really got anything to do with the fabric of the game as such. It's just all around cosmetically being able to play as one of the characters from the franchise. So showed off, you know, some of the kind of signature moves and stuff. But if you know who Batgirl is, it's not going to tell you anything new about the game mm-hmm. and such. So, yeah, I agree with James, to be honest. Richard, are you, uh, you um, going to go against this trend? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the other guys have summed it up pretty well. I'm reviewing this game. Uh, if it comes out, <laughs> when we get to the I'm the one reviewing this game, because if any of you come in now after you slug this game off, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah um, I'm, I'm still looking for but um, now, James, I was going to do, wanted to talk to you last week, but you're off sick. Skull and Bones, right? Yeah. Which is your big game coming out in November? Um, yeah. It's. I didn't realise it was seventy quid. 
It seems quite pricey, doesn't it? <laughs> for an on- <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was might go free to play. I, I thought it was the really interesting. That's, a, that's, an, that's a multiplayer game as well, only, isn't it? It's like Battlefield mm. all over again. They're taking a risk there, aren't they? It Jesus. can't hold that price. No. A massive risk. I guarantee it'll be either fantastic <laughs> or it'll be in the bargain bin <laughs> at every pound structure <laughs> within a month. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be like, that's a mad choice. Seventy quid. Wow, mm. what are you doing right. there? Um, good. Let's do a quiz now. Rich is mm. gonna do a quiz. I can play a quiz. This is good, isn't it? And it's not Ooh. a German one. So let's. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Paul, well, we're looking forward to it, Paul. We I've, are. I've not told you what it is, uh, yes. so you might be no. regretting it. <laughs> um, go, Richard. Over to you. Uh, okay, so. I've got 15 badly described video games and I've been scouring the internet for badly dis- badly described plots and video games and, and I've managed to come up with a few myself but I've got 15 of them Ooh. and I'm going to give you the plot and I want you to give me the name of the game mm-hmm. and we're going to be doing rollover rules because everyone, everyone loves that oh, um, but I think if you get one guess each people buzz in for each one then yeah. that should that should be all right we get one guess each yes right uh gareth what's your buzzer i haven't done this for a while um uh Ooh. yeah i think i was doing that <laughs> <laughs> that rings a bell <laughs> uh darren what's yours uh buzz and james yeah, I'm gonna struggle. I want to struggle to differentiate between Gareth oh, maybe and I'll, Darren. But maybe here we go. maybe I'll make mine another one. Um, just go an octave higher yeah. or something. Waka waka. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Good. Right. <laughs> okay then. <Yeah. laughs> some of these are quite hard. Just just FYI, but some Good. of them are quite easy as well. Good. Okay. Uh, okay. Question one. A convicted killer takes a young girl on a hugely dangerous hike. Uh-huh. James? I don't know wrong, is it The Walking Dead? It is, well done. Uh, oh, well done, yeah, it is, isn't it? Of course it is, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, that's oh, great. That's really good. Good, like that. So, yeah, yeah. Th- think, think of them like that and yeah. then you should be okay. Well done, James. Yeah. Question two. A star athlete pursues his abusive father through time. Daddy is a genocidal whale beast. <laughs> what the hell is this? A, <laughs> a star athlete. <sighs> oh. Oh. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> can't you think of anything? I can't. I can't. No. Um, I can't. I can't think of anything. It's never guess, guys. Yeah. I just Time... I haven't got any clues for you either. Waka waka. Gareth. <laughs> Time splitters. <laughs> no. Waka. <laughs> <laughs> James. No. Oh, I think that's close. I think that's close. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I can't even hazard a sensible guess, so I'm going to pass. Okay, it was Final Fantasy X. Oh, yeah, because he was... Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. Roll over. So this one's for two points, then. Question three. Man escorts his unknown daughter in the clouds. <laughs> Say it again. Oh, go on, Dan. Darren? Is it Bad Shock Infinite? Well done. Oh, well done, Darren. Well oh. done. That was for two points. Uh, question four. Corporate mogul organises a martial arts tournament in order to kick seven oh, back out of his family. <laughs> oh, I think, that, I think that was James. Yeah. Tekken. Well done. Oh, damn. Good job. Damn. damn. <laughs> Question five. 
horror writer scares himself half to death. Waka waka. Uh, <sighs> Gareth. Alan Wake. Well done. Well done. Uh, yeah. Question six. Man gets coughed on, dies. <laughs> waka waka. <laughs> Gareth. Red Dead Redemption 2. Well done. <laughs> 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 that's great that's great so, we, we had a friend I'm going to do this we've got a friend of mine in James who forever was going to be uh, make sure you don't get an off on because he thought <laughs> there was a way around that <laughs> <laughs> he thought it only, it only happened to his <laughs> <laughs> His character, which I loved. Yeah, I thought they really built a whole line there. They've done really a lot of work there. Yeah. But... yeah. Love it. <laughs> uh, so after six questions, everyone's on two points. Oh, wow. Oh. Uh, these next few, you really might need to think outside the box with. But uh, okay. question seven, a race of moronic humanoids require round the clock care. You are their caregiver. Uh-huh. James? The Sims. Well done. Oh, brilliant. Oh, good. Very good. <laughs> very good shout. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, question eight, a distraught adrenaline junkie attempts to wheel himself off a cliff. Sadly, all of the available edges are curved upwards. Spurs. Darren? Uh, I don't know which one it is. Is it, is it Trials Fusion? It's a good shout, but it's not right. Waka Waka. Gareth? Tony Hawks? Well done. Oh, well done. Oh. Good. This is very tight. Uh, a movie star, two ninjas, a cyborg, a military soldier, a martial artist, oh. and a thunder gog. James? No, I'll come back. Correct. Well done. Question 10. Kid goes on a nice field trip to a farm, a factory, and finally an aquarium where he meets his friends. (laughs) Waka waka. Gareth? Inside? Well done. done. That's a great one. (laughs) That's an amazing one. Wow. So Gareth's got four, James has got four, Darren's got two. But there's still still five points to play for. (laughs) Question 11. Immigrant holds a funeral for their significant other and starts the end of the world. (laughs) God, what's that? I can't. I can't think that's mad. Can you read it again? Sorry. Yeah. Immigrant holds a funeral for their significant other and starts the end of the world. It's a long chat, but... (laughs) Oh, James. It's a gig of what, is it? (sighs) No. I can't think of anything in the funeral. Like a zombie apocalypse one? No. I've got, I've got nothing. Um, uh, waka waka. <laughs> Gareth. De- dead Rising. I've got no idea. No. Oh, well, I no idea. Um, Far Cry 6, I don't know. <laughs> no, it was God of War. Um... Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, wow. Question 11. A yellow ball trying to eat all those dots. Waka waka. Off like... <laughs> <laughs> James, I think that was just you for two points. Uh-uh. Yeah, well done. Damn. Well done. Question 13. The entire United States Postal Service has gone on strike apart waka from waka. one person. Uh-huh. Gareth? Death Stranding. Correct. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, 14. Boy with a key uses it as a sword to fight Black, Black Shadows Black. and rescue. Oh, I think that were Darren. Kingdom Hearts 3? Really? I'll accept Kingdom Hearts, yeah. yes. That's right. And the last one, Japanese Virtual Tourism and Crime Simulator. Waka Waka. Uh-huh. Gareth. Um, Yakuza. Well done. Um, so, it a uh, it's a draw, and I haven't got a tiebreaker. Uh-huh. Oh. We're going to take a draw. Oh, wait, this is Are you sure? Yeah. I, can, I, can, I can find one. Quickly. Go on and find yeah. one if you want. <laughs> oh, while we're doing this, I'll take a draw. Will you take a draw? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Wait. You did well, mate. You did well. We did. That was a really good game, Richard. That was fun. That's yeah, that fun. was good. Mm-hmm. Very, very good. Um, just recently, just tell us what we've got a little bit of time before we go. Um, the Talking about this um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, who put that up there? The, the, the flute. Uh, I did. Tell us about that. Uh, I just thought it was a pretty cool thing. So, obviously, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is coming out Friday. Um, but the the composer has has had a a flute made based off the designs of the some of the uh, musical instruments to feature in the game. I don't know exactly why these flutes are in the game because I've tried to sort of avoid that sort of information. But uh, he's then had this flute created and then composed a lot of the soundtrack with that flute that has been made. Mm-hmm. So I just I just thought that was pretty cool. That's very good. I like that. Um, good. Right, gentlemen. What are we going to do next week? What are we looking forward to? Not what are we doing. What are we looking forward to? Darren, what are you looking forward to? A um, bit of a random one. Someone I used to work with, and there's a fight me on the Hendu. So we'll be hitting the streets of Nottingham on Saturday night and then booked in for a carvery on Sunday. So a nice weekend all around. Like 1986 or ever again. Carvery and is. Hendu. I'm, I'm, a, I'm older than my physical appearance, they suggest <laughs> mentally. <laughs> I booked him for a recovery. <laughs> wow. Good. Great, I like that. Good work. Well, enjoy that. Um, Thank you. Richard, what about you? What are you looking forward to? Obviously, the women's Euro final mm-hmm. on Sunday. And uh, I hope the Lionesses win it, obviously. But then next week, I don't know if this is happening in all cinemas, but for a few months now, they've been showing each week uh, a James Bond film in order. And... Uh, They've start, they're starting this week, ne- next week, with uh, the Pierce Brosnan ones, which are secretly are my favourite ones because they're the ones that got me into James Bond. Mm-hmm. So uh, GoldenEye is the one on Tuesday, I believe it is, and I've booked oh. tickets for the rest of them as well. So I've got all four to come in the next month. Great. Good. 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 Yeah, the best ones. Um, James, what about you? Um. Well, after that, I think we're going to watch all the James Bond films in the next week. <laughs> and honestly, uh, <laughs> wow. Um, I, I'm doing a little favour for a theatre company next week. Um, a theatre company called Stan's Cap, and they do this great thing when they do these two characters called The Commentators. And these guys are like John Watson types, and they go and commentate on normal things. <laughs> so they're just like outdoors in a festival and they're commentating on people walking by and they interview people. So they're like, but in that sense of like a John Motson that people are talking in a very stat way about people and stuff like that. And but I'm doing it because they've, they've, they haven't got, they couldn't get anyone and I said, I'll do you. I'll do one because I really like what they do. So I'm doing that over the weekend, three days over in Stratford in the Olympic Park for the Olympic celebrations. Um, the 10 year anniversary mm-hmm. sort of thing. yeah I could be killed that sounds good but it's good fun mm. it's good fun they're great yeah. so it's good um, but it'd be very hot as I'm in a sheepskin coat <laughs> yeah. no not sacrificing the look at all no, no. <laughs> um, right gentlemen if we need to speak to you where would we do Richard I'm on Twitter and Instagram and my handle is at Dobbo1912 great and Darren uh, I'm also on Twitter and my handle is at 27 Darren. Hi James. Uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram and my tag is at OKUKO. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me at GB Bradley on Twitter and Twitch. And the dog is in bot one. It's pretty well done, buddy. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.
You've been listening to the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. You have found all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook.